I'm going to share some work that we've done using uh, mainly rendering, real-time rendering as a design tool. And virtual reality is one side aspect of that. And then this morning at four in the morning in Dublin, I thought, well, how, do, how should I start this whole thing? So this might be a little quirky, but I think virtual reality has always this, or in my mind at least, and some of my our students at MIT, this ideas of the ultimate hacker. You see here uh, Theodore Donald, uh, the rat, which is the hacker that saves the world. So this fascination that some of us have with people that are so deep in their computer that they create this virtual reality with them. And uh, we call this to getting in the zone, obviously, that's an expression that we all the time use. And also this idea of flow, uh, which is really the key of this. Uh, a lot of uh, the work in our lab is always done in collaboration, even though today definitely the shout out goes to uh, Nathaniel Jones, Dr. Jones, who uh, defended his work two weeks ago and who has developed the tool and who just built an installer just so that Chevy and uh, Cynthia could uh, prepare it on this computer today. And I'm amazed uh, to see that it's actually working. This is the second computer in the world this is working on. Uh, so uh, designers are confronted with a, l a larger and larger number of uh, performance criteria that they have to look at. There was the simple time, then we only had to look at light, then we had to look at energy, then at glare, and now the list becomes longer and longer. And obviously, when we are playing this uh, simulation games at MIT, this is our midterm, and the idea is whoever designs the most efficient building in 90-minute wins, um, that some students feel totally overwhelmed. So the, oh my god, how can I basically design with all these metrics at the same time in mind? So when Nathaniel started, we effectively said, let's tackle the problem. What do we want? We want a simulation tool that's accurate, fast, and intuitive. And that statement per se is totally meaningless because obviously everybody wants something that's fast, accurate, and meaningless. So we started off thinking more strategically about it. So how accurate is necessary? And that gets you in these ideas, well, we can use a rendering tool and run it in Radiance. And then this is four years ago when we run an accurate model in Radiance that takes 50 minutes. That's not very interactive. If we run something fast in 1.5 minutes, that's A, not interactive, and B, not good enough because you don't see all the results in the image. So for example, the second workspace in the end is not even showing up in the first simulation. So we need something faster and more accurate. And then just doing a review of lots of different previous studies uh, to validate daylighting tools, we came up with the goal, we want to create a tool that at least is within 20% of measured values. And then the second uh, question was, how fast should a simulation tool be? And there we dug up some of the word from the Media Lab, this notion of flow, a focused mental state in which tasks become automated and effortless. And in order to understand how we can reach this state, this zone we're working on, where a designer just works and forgets that the tool is there, the tool just provides information to help us design, we looked at one of our uber productive uh, designers in our lab and we just recorded his rhino session for three hours. And here you basically see frantic at work. We are deleting geometry, we're adding geometry, we are manipulating geometry faster, 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 bathroom break, and then we can keep doing that again and again and again. And really the only time where we have one and a half minutes or 49 minutes is during lunch break. So that's obviously not enough. So based on this and some other work, that has been done in uh, user interface design. Uh, there are different recommended delay times or maximum delay times that you can work with. So when you have your mouse movement, then you want something immediately to happen, right? Even 0.1 second is really annoying when you move the mouse and it trails. If you want to do something that is a, a command click, a result, you have to give it half a second. And then if you have a larger cognitive process, just thinking about a problem and then coming up with something, you might give it 10 seconds. But really, uh, lighting is something that we want to immediately see. So our goal in the end was for Nathaniel, let's build a simulation tool that's as accurate as Radiance, but deliver simulation results in just half a second. So that's pretty tough. And Nathaniel spent a number of years developing a tool that's called Accelerate. You can download it, uh, load that from our website, it's a graphics card based uh, method of radiance. It's about uh, 44 times faster than radiance, but that still doesn't get you in the right speed. So at the very end of uh, his thesis, we just tried something else as well, which is accelerate uh, RT for real time. And instead of using the traditional backward ray tracing method, what we do in this case is 
we're just shooting individual rains, uh, rays. So it's a frame by frame method, where first we shoot just the direct frame, and then we shoot, uh, shoot an indirect frame. And what you get out of this, which is what you're going to see in a second, is basically an image that first looks uh, a little scattered, not very sharp, but that within a few seconds gets very, very sharp. And from the get-go, you get very accurate results. So this type of rendering allows you to effectively have all the information that you would have from a radiance model that runs for 10 minutes in very, very fast uh, iterations. And this is how the tool looks. So at the beginning, what we did, we did a comparative study. The idea is you walk through a space. This is the design school at Harvard. Whenever, And now we are moving. So whenever we are moving, it takes a couple of seconds to, um, to uh, run the simulation. Whenever a chair or a table is green, it's good. When it's red, it's not. And so this is where the virtual reality comes in. We just, after the, the thesis was uh, basically done, we just said, oh, wouldn't it be nice to link the same thing to virtual reality? And for all of you that want to try that, that just takes two weeks or so. So basically, we have the technology in place that when you can create it in one way, you can create it in the virtual environment as well. But just focusing on some of the results, uh, which have some parallels to what we heard before, uh, in a user study where we had this screen-based evaluation of spaces, we had 40 uh, uh, students work uh, in two different environments. First, regular diva simulation. So you reposition yourself, you click, you get an image after 15 seconds, and real-time renderings. And then we, you see uh, basically these stories. How do people walk through a space to designers to decide what's the best shading system for this space? And what we effectively got from this, this were two different types of spaces where we wanted them to maximize the daylighting, to minimize the glare. If you look at uh, millions of different simulation comparisons, you get this Pareto front, and using the virtual reality, real-time simulations, you get a lot closer to optimum results than you would do otherwise. So that was a good result. We also got a lot more confident in the Accelerate tool, even though the students are very familiar with Diva. So even just doing one session with it, when you have very, when you have live, see your model and walk through your model, that has a lot of compelling aspects to it. And so last slide, um, what are my impressions really from this? It's obviously very seductive. It's very uh, cool to do a virtual reality set, so we tried it. I think the immersive experiment is especially useful in um, applications as we saw at EPFL. If you walk in our environment and you can try that through that, I actually get quite nauseous after just 30 seconds of doing that. So this is something that I'm not sure if it's generational. Uh, even when I, I then try to play a computer game, uh, also virtual reality, and I get nauseous as well. So maybe that's just me. But this technology, I think, comes at a price. It's not necessarily a better design tool, I feel. I think the dashboard with the view for our purposes still works better. Um, that's what I had for today. I think we have three different sets for you to try out. And of course, we are happy to discuss our findings.